And the last piece is the challenge. And this is where I'm gonna spend most of our conversation today. Because when we think about the impact of automation, there's most definitely a challenge. And it reminds me a lot of this. Now, take a, take a second and in the chat, put what do you think is happening here? Maybe one or two people can give a shot at that. Communication bear, talk, talking confusion, miscommunication. Exactly, it's miscommunication. That's exactly, the listening person does not know what the other guy is talking about, exactly. And we see this a lot, right? You know, I see a couple of the videos on how many people see this in your organization all the time. You know, there's contextual pieces missing from the mind. People don't have the same access to information or they actually don't process the information in the same way to be able to have that shared understanding. The number one risk, the number one challenge when adopting new technology, new automation practices is going to be bridging that communication barrier to ensure that it's adopted and implemented properly, where it creates that meaningful outcome. And it leads us to the number one issue that I believe is facing teams and organizations today. And it's the elephant in the room. It's the skills gap. And you can kind of see it with, with the guy who says, no, I don't want to be here. Why is this happening? I just showed up. And the elephant's kind of smirking. There's this, this personification of, yeah, I'm here. You know I'm here. You know exactly what it is and what are you going to do about it? Just so happens to be sitting directly in front of the computer because most people have different barriers between using new technologies. They have barriers between being able to actually fulfill the role because there's something typically changing. You know, I was just working with an organization and they've reorged multiple times and I'll tell you three times in the last 14 months. When you're consistently changing that quickly, people don't have the time to be able to actually upskill and, and find their cadence to be able to deliver meaningful results. And so there's a significant skills gap that exists. And for us to be able to address that reminds me a lot of this picture. It's kind of funny. You know, take a second to really look at it. You know, I, I thought it worked at first, and then I spent about five minutes really digging into it. And it feels real familiar. I feel like I know someone who's done all of those things. Like I can put names to each of these characters. You know, someone, he's got the right tool. He's bouncing. I'm almost there, guys. We're going to make it. Someone holding the tree. I'm not going. You, you can't convince me. There's no chance I'm not doing it. People who've tried to follow and, you know, really are struggling to be able to make it and hold on. Holding on for dear life, upside down, help. And then someone, I think the funniest scroll, holding on to the tree, looking, I'm curious. No, I'm not doing that. You see all these people fall, I'm gonna hold on right here until. And this picture summarizes the existing skills gap to me more than anything else. Because oftentimes we'll have people on our teams that say, hey, I have the answer. I know what we need to do, follow me though that we don't take the time to share the context, to give the resources, the training, the support for the other people to be able to follow accordingly. We haven't validated it. And ultimately there's an essence that's missing for our teams to be able to move forward together. This is a significant problem. This I believe to be the most significant problem. And ultimately, if we look to the World Economic Forum data, we seem to see a continuous agreement around, around executives across the board. You look at 95% of people surveyed believe that retraining existing employees is one of the highest imperatives that they have to deal with in the next handful of years. And over 40% of roles will take over six months to retrain. This is just US data. When you think about the types of training that exist, over 40% is meant to be internal learning and development. We have a significant issue happening here. Our teams and our people often don't, did not um, sign up to, to create new roles. When you go up for a job interview and when they got hired, they signed up for a specific role and activity. And having technology change the way in which we're working, 
there's a consent barrier that's happening. Say, well, what's this new job? How does it mean? Am I going to be able to contribute here? And this is one of the leading sources of fear because people and organizations don't necessarily have the skills that they need to contribute. And they know that internally because they see the change and they're scared because what if I get left behind? What if I'm not good enough to do the new thing? I've done this thing my whole life. What do you do in a command and control environment where someone's done the same thing for 20 plus years and the role is now being automated? What do you do in you know, highly regulated environments where you have multiple protocols to be able to meet, yet now you have new technology that's processing um, and replicating you know, human interactions and behaviors at a speed that's much significantly faster? How does that person contribute and where do they get the confidence to be able to do so? Thank you.